In 2017, more than 200 million barrels of beer were sold in the United States. It is the most popular alcoholic drink in America and has been so for some time. And today, 19% of beer sales in the U.S. are from smaller, local breweries. 9% more than only 10 years ago. This means there are more choices for beer lovers than ever before. When you find the right brew for you, it's easy to ask for another beer, please. Hey everybody, I'm Lawrence, and I'm Sarah, and this is Another, Another Beer, Beer Please. Please, or should we be saying howdy y'all, because today, <laughs> well we got a little bit of a western motif going today, because we're talking about Pay It Brewing, and Pay It Brewing has a western theme on most of their beers, yeah, outdoorsy, very outdoorsy, yeah. very Idaho-y, we have lots of history of ranching and all that, you know, great mountains, beautiful outdoors, natural wilderness areas. Idaho is a beautiful state, and Payette Brewing Company is a beautiful brewer, and this is our favorite beer from them. I think so too. I think so. Yeah. It's called Mutton Buster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought she was going to say something. Sorry. <laughs> Mutton Buster is a brown ale. Is Allergy fun. season. I'm not having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Now we know it's spring and that means um, next month we're going to be moving into light ales, mm -hmm. pale ales, lagers, and of course IPAs. Probably the most popular beer in oh, America today yeah. is the IPA. Which is not my favorite beer. But yeah, we're not big IPA fans. That's fine. Yep, because we, we got a friend who is a big IPA fan. Yep, so he'll be joining us um, soon yep. for some IPA reviews. Yeah, our good friend Jose is going to join us, and he's going to help us pick out some nice IPAs to share with you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll tell you all about them, and I'll try to find one that I enjoy. But right now, we're drinking something I love to drink. Mutton Buster Brown Ale from Payette Brewing Company. I love this beer. It is so, so good. Um, while she's pouring hers, I'm going to go ahead. Now, I poured mine. You, now you're saying, Lawrence, where's the head? I poured it before so we could take a pretty picture, so the head has settled. Head settles quickly. So remember, always pour the head to release the CO2, to release the flavors and the aromas, so you're really getting to know everything about your beer. Mmm, this, this is really good. It's got a real forward nuttiness in the smell. You'd probably wouldn't talk to it. I can't. My nose is stuffed. <laughs> I can't smell. Oh, it's so... But I'll take your word for it. Well, what I love about Mutton Buster, the first time I tried it, now, Payette is real fond of hops, and they do great um, jobs with hops, and I think this, it has an IBU of 25. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's International Bitterness Units. The higher it is, the more bitter your beer is going to be. Standard IPAs range anywhere from like 70 to 180, 180. IBUs. That's, that's like, oh, pow. But with this, the IBU was 25, but that surprised me. Yeah, it doesn't taste like that at all still. Very smooth. Very easy to drink. One of the most sessionable darker ales I've ever had. It really is. This is, um, I think for me, if you, if you know someone who doesn't like Scottish ale or someone who likes red ales, but eh, they're not really wanting to go past that, this is a really good introduction beer for that. I think so too. Brown ales... Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I've had them and they got a little too heavy on the hops or they yeah. didn't use the right hops. And so it was too hop forward and I couldn't enjoy that maltiness. But Payette Brewing did something phenomenal with Mutton Buster. This is, this is a really good beer. Oh yeah. They used five different malts. Now I have to admit, I got a cheat sheet going just to make sure I could remember them all. They've got brown malts, chocolate malts, um, crystal malts, pale malts, and victor malts. Five malts that combine to create this wonderful, roasty, nuttiness, sweetness to a phenomenal beer. Mm -hmm. And then they use two different kinds of hops. They use the uh, Magnum and the uh, St. Hood hops. And you don't even you don't even taste those at all. No, I, 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 at least I don't. Well, the way they describe it on their website is that the hops give it an earthiness, and I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more. I know that's true. Yeah, I'm. And, and that's, that's the thing. When you're looking for the right beer, of course, always look for what your own taste is. Don't go just by us, but if we recommend something, give it a try. It's going to be awesome. But I'm just amazed at how they took a brown ale 
that might overpower some people and they added the right type of hops at the right point in the brewing <clears throat> so those hops just bring the malts to life yeah it's still there i feel like um the more i drink this the more i can taste the different malts in there but not at the same time it's like a like five stages of the malts that you can taste mm, i like the way it, yeah. yeah it's like a five layered beer well, yeah, like I've told you, you don't sip, you don't sip beer like you sip wine and, and spit it out. I've never understood that. I would probably be the drunkest wine taster in the world. But with beer, get a good mouthful. Ooh, mm. You breathe through it. You you feel it in your whole mouth. And you gotta remember different areas of the tongue have different sensors on them so you're going to get different flavors and with this it's like you say you you see the complexity with your tongue right that is the worst analogy that's the I've weirdest ever. That's thing i've ever terrible. heard i think if people saw with their tongues that would be really really strange <laughs> got my eye on you but <laughs> that's weird let's not talk about this okay no more eyes on tongues but since we all know about bitter and sweet and salty and umami and all these different flavors that you're able mm -hmm. to detect, and when you pair that up with your nose that has the olfactory senses that help, I mean, half of your taste, or sometimes all of your taste, comes from your nose. That's why if you're like me right now, you can't <laughs> smell <laughs> We'll have to bleep that out. No. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, it, it is true that you know, the aromas in this beer, and when you take a nice big mouthful and you're enjoying it, mm -hmm. and it does have that complexity. And that's the thing that's fun. I mean, stouts will often go for a lot of chocolate malts and a lot of crystal malts, and so you get those real forward coffee and chocolate <coughs> notes, and that's wonderful for a stout. Mm -hmm. It's good for a porter. Remember we taught you, porters and stouts, very, very similar brews, but brown ales are kind of you know, in that arena of an amber or a red yeah. ale, they're not supposed to be too high in alcohol content. Or too hoppy, but some people who brew brown ales, sorry, or ambers, don't, um, they, they stray and either get really too hoppy, um, which I never understood because I thought ambers were supposed to be like really nice and crisp and light. Very almost, balanced. <clears throat> almost just like a, sorry, like a darker lager. Mm -hmm. Which, I, that's how I thought it was supposed to be, but some of them are just way too hoppy. Yeah, and I think the trend towards IPAs over the last decade in, <clears throat> excuse me, local brewing and home brewing and micro brewing, you know, it's very exciting, but um, sometimes all you can taste is smell right. is like one particular type of hop. Yeah. And again, hops, depending on when you put the hops in the brew, at the first stage when you're brewing, later on to give it more flavor, or at the very end, or even dry hopping, which is adding hops at the very end of the process, that gives you all that aroma. And sometimes that can be really cool and balanced. Yeah. These malts, I have to admit, the way they give you that earthiness without giving you bitterness and without giving you those coffee notes from the malts, right? because they use five different malts to balance each other and create a very robust, very flavorful beer but not overpowering like some porters, mm -hmm. definitely not at the level of most stouts. It's very right. nice and sessionable. I could drink this all day. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yes, we have. At only 5.5% alcohol, if you're enjoying a good beer, you know, one an hour, you're doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you enjoy more than one an hour, eh, maybe you want to take an Uber. Ooh, do you think we'll get sponsorship if we say Uber enough? I don't know. Yeah, I doubt it. They don't pay their people enough. We'll go one way or the other. Tip your Uber drivers. You can, so you should. Yep. But um, this is definitely a beer that I would enjoy with any kind of meal. I could eat, I could drink it with yep. a salad. I could have it with a steak. Um, and I just enjoy drinking it on its own. I think that's one of the best points about this beer is that you could just drink it all by itself. Because like we were talking about before, some stouts, some porters, you need to have some food with it. Um, I mean, you don't need to have food with anything, but it is best served with food. Yeah. Um, because it, it has, like like you said, a certain amount of hops or malts mm -hmm. that either bring out the flavor um, so that you need something else with it. But this one, since, since it has five malts and two types of hops, it, 
I'm doing it again. I'm describing it like. <laughs> that's a good thing. Ooh, you're just painting a picture with your words. <laughs> it is nice having a beer that has so much flavor that is so drinkable. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, when we get into summer, of course, we'll be exploring shandies and Rattlers. You know, all those refreshing things on a hot day. Ciders. Ciders. But this, I could still drink on a warm day because it doesn't sour in my mouth. No, that's right. It, it doesn't, doesn't make me feel bloated. And it doesn't make me feel, you know, ah, 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 after a couple of beers. Right. It's really enjoyable. And a day, not a day drinker, a daily drinker. In other words, you can enjoy mutton, a mutton buster with dinner every night for a week and not get tired of the beer. Yep. I find the name interesting, though. Yeah. Mutton Buster. Um, sorry, Mutton Buster. It just got that kind of accent to it. And that's probably offensive to all my uh, friends who are ranchers and farmers. And I apologize, but I'm just doing it for humor. That's how I'll do Scottish sometimes. <laughs> I'll shut all anger to Scott people everywhere with my crappy accent. Uh -huh. But um, Mutton Busters, when I think of Mutton Busters, I honestly think of kids riding sheep at rodeos. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> And I'm thinking, you shouldn't be drinking beer, even if you are a mutton buster. So uh, we do hope to go to Payette Brewing Company soon. <laughs> Our next brewery visit is actually going to be with Sockeye. So we're looking forward to that. We get to go see them this Friday. And, of course, we'll share that video once, uh, you know, it's all edited right. and loaded up there. So I'll take that out. <laughs> but I can't wait to go visit Payette. If you haven't been there yet, and uh, they're not downtown, they're off of uh, River Street, right? Yep, which is... Kind of going into downtown. It's, yeah. kind of, it's where the library is. Right, the Albertson Park area. <coughs> so Go sorry. check out Payette Brewing Company. I mean, it's a beautiful brewery. Mm -hmm. And they have this lovely restaurant attached to it. I've never tried their food. Looking forward to that yeah. when we go for a visit. But I can tell you one thing. They've got a wide variety of beers. Everything from basic sessionable lagers to wonderful brown ale to very popular IPAs. Um, I like their fly line. That was a yeah. real good beer. So, and I mean, let's face it, Payette is, they're local. And Pints of Idaho, this is still Idaho yeah. Craft Beer Month. And we only have a few days left. Huh? I know. This, this week is going to be our last week of visiting just Idaho breweries. We're going to continue doing that because we love going to local breweries. Oh, yeah. And we want to support our local brewers because they make it great. Right. And we get to have fresh, delicious homegrown beer. But we're also going to branch out into some of the big brands of stuff that I really like. And um, I'm definitely going to be personally doing a review of what I consider to be the best beer in the world. <laughs> but we'll get to that. <laughs> See, we're giving you previews now. So back to Mutton Buster. Very smooth, very easy to drink, and don't be hesitant to pour it aggressively. Right. Because the head settles quickly. And it's just, oh, it's so good. Oh. I wish I could smell. <laughs> I'll smell it for you. Uh, <coughs> ah, so good. I can't wait for allergies to go away. Yeah, that'll be sometime in the fall, I believe. Uh, yeah. Or until we find you good drugs. <sighs> yeah. Or local honey, I hear. Actually, that'd be really good. Mm, local honey brew. Maybe that would help with your allergies. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, if you I know try. a great <laughs> local Idaho honey brew... You let us know, we'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And I'll always ask for... Another, another beer, please! <laughs> mm. So good. I'm so sorry you're still allergic. I wish allergic. I could smell. Uh, smell will come back someday. Oh. Don't forget to bleep that word, though. What, sh Yeah. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you didn't say or 